Hi, I brought a cheap generic SDR from China, so now what? The first thing I did was try to find out what it was. Plugged into my laptop, it comes up as this. SDR Play RSP1. Now if you search this SDR Play, you come to the shocking realization that China just sent you a clone of a product. So then if you keep looking and digging into it, you find out that this company, SDR Play, provide a proprietary driver and API to communicate with the device. However, if you do a bit more digging, you will find out that they released a new API to combat these clones that are now on the market. And a lot of the SDR software requires the new API. Eventually, you'll come to learn that a brilliant man made an open source driver for this device. And there is a brilliant open source SDR software which uses this driver and that is SDR Angel. There is release versions of their code. They have, they have a dev installation file here. However, I couldn't install it. I had too many uh, dependency errors. However, there's some useful instructions on how to install from source. This is how I got the software. I manually built the, the software using these instructions. Once you've installed the software, you then need to install any dependencies. So as I was using the SDR Play, I also installed this driver. This particular model has dip switches, which I suppose is for filtering out frequencies. Here's the user interface of SDR Angel. First of all, we're going to want to bring up our device. So this generic SDR device is a receive only device. So we click this icon, which I suppose is meant to be an antenna with radio waves going towards it. And then from the drop down list, we will see SDR play. So, okay. And then we have a GUI with the main settings. So this is the main frequency. This is the bandwidth. And this is the uh, band that we're going to be interested in. And here is the gain to set for the signal. Here is the window which will show the waterfall of the radio signals. Let me just hit play. And this big spike here is due to the power circuit of the device. So if we hit this button here, that will automatically remove it. The easiest signal to look at first, I think, is the FM radio signal because it has a telltale wiggle to it. So we have to put in the frequency. Uh, so I don't know, 80, 89. 89 megahertz, select the right band, turn up the gain, and then you can zoom in on this window. It's a bit too much gain. There we go. To me, that looks like a FM signal. So the next thing we need is a demodulator. So if we click this icon, this icon here, we will have a list of software demodulators. So we want the white um, FM demodulator. So apply. And then if we move this over the signal. I think John ever changing and that's reflected in the synopsis to a number of composers who are particularly close to John. And this is the sample rate, so how often the software will be polling the device. One reason I'm interested in SDR is because it will let you look at 
radio signals broadcast which will be useful for fault finding. Here I've got the spec for a LoRa modem and I'm just going to look up the frequency for each of the channels so that I can try and monitor and maybe even decode the messages that are sent. So here in the spec sheet it says that the frequency of broadcast is 410125 plus the channel times by 1 megahertz. I have a Python script here which will just interface with the device. So the device is on channel 1. I've made the script continuously broadcast a message every five seconds if the script has an argument passed with it. I'm going to send hi. Oh, there we go. We've got something on the waterfall. Now if I add a demodulator, so LoRa broadcasts in a uh, encoding called chirp chat. Modulators trying to get something. I tried and I tried, but I just was not able to demodulate a message. I don't know if that's because I need more information such as details about the preamble and the header that is used by the LoRa module or if it's because of the SDR isn't capable of getting a clear enough signal. Nonetheless, it is useful to be able to fault find wireless messages, especially if you try and build a network and you have lots of devices trying to negotiate and talk to each other. So in conclusion, this is a great SDR device to get started with. You do need a bit of technical knowledge to be able to get a working setup since this is a clone device. But for $10, you can't complain.